Hello. In this chapter, we'll take a closer look at inflammatory bowel disease, often called IBD. IBD is a condition that causes persistent or recurrent gastrointestinal signs. The key feature of IBD is inflammation of the lining of the GI tract. The severity and location of this inflammation tends to correlate with the clinical signs observed. For example, inflammation of the stomach and upper small intestines is usually associated with vomiting, while inflammation along the lower small intestines and large intestines usually results in diarrhea. To understand how cats develop IBD, let's take a closer look at this complex disorder. In reality, IBD is probably not a single disease at all, but rather a group of GI inflammatory disorders with a similar endpoint. In most patients, the underlying cause of the GI inflammation is never determined. In some species, such as humans and dogs, specific genetic defects have been linked to the condition. Siamese cats have a higher incidence of IBD than other breeds of cats, and inherited abnormalities probably play a role in feline IBD as well. Although much of the science behind IBD is not fully understood, Researchers suspect that it involves an intolerance to resident intestinal bacteria normally present within the intestines and dietary components. In a susceptible cat, the immune system mounts an overaggressive inflammatory response against these normally harmless intestinal constituents. This response leads to uncontrolled intestinal inflammation and symptoms of chronic GI disease. Exactly how and why this dysregulation of the immune system is triggered remains a mystery. IBD can occur in all breeds, however there is an increased prevalence in Siamese cats. The condition is most common in middle-aged cats and is uncommon in cats less than six months of age. So inflammatory bowel disease in cats, and if the, if the cat was like a dog, we think you may only just have intest inflammatory bowel disease. But many cats with inflammatory bowel disease also have concurrent disease in other organ systems. And so we're becoming increasingly aware that cats with inflammatory bowel disease often have inflammation in their liver, known as cholangitis. Um, and they, they may also have inflammation in their pancreas, pancreatitis. And so we see this combination of diseases in cats called triaditis and with pancreatic inflammation, hepatic inflammation, and intestinal inflammation. Cats with IBD may show some or all of the following clinical signs, including vomiting, which may contain food, bile, hair, or blood. The blood may appear as fresh red blood, or it might be partially digested, giving it the appearance of coffee grounds. Another potential clinical sign is small intestinal type diarrhea. This type of diarrhea is usually characterized by large volumes of watery stool. The stool may also contain melana, which is a darkening of the feces caused by pigments found in blood. Melana is a sign of upper GI bleeding. Large intestinal type diarrhea is also sometimes present in IBD. This type of diarrhea is usually characterized by the increased frequency of stool, as well as blood or mucus in the stool. Other signs of IBD may include weight loss, increased or decreased appetite, abdominal discomfort, excessive GI motility and gas, often associated with audible burbling sounds, eating grass or other non-food items called pica, and rarely ascites, which is the accumulation of fluid in the abdomen. In some cats, these clinical signs may be present at all times, while in other cats, the signs may be intermittent. Persistent or recurrent GI signs may suggest the possibility that your cat has inflammatory bowel disease. Since a number of diseases can be associated with chronic GI inflammation, your veterinarian may recommend diagnostic testing. 
Well, if we have a definitive diagnosis, we're more sure about what we actually want to treat and what sort of treatments we want to use. If we don't really know what the cause is, it's hard to give you more specific treatment. Um, and so we try and hone in and be as specific as we can. Based on what we find in her, her blood work and her urinalysis as well and ruling out things, we, we may opt to do an, an abdominal ultrasound to get an indication of um, gut thickness, what her pancreas, her liver looks like. Some of these guys, even though the, the signs localized to the intestine, they can often be concurrent pancreatic involvement or, or hepatic involvement mm -hmm. that's not immediately um, obvious. So we'll use ultrasound and the blood work to, to help us there. Now even with a specific diagnosis, we may still resort to diet and antibiotics, but at least we're more certain that we've ruled out other things like hyperthyroidism that's treated you know, with radiation therapy um, or um, different drugs. It can cause very clinical, similar clinical signs. Diagnostic tests might include a serum biochemistry panel, to help rule out diseases of other organ systems and to characterize the GI disease, a complete blood count to evaluate your cat's red and white blood cells looking for problems such as anemia and signs of infection, a fecal examination to eliminate infectious and parasitic causes of GI inflammation, a T4 measurement of the thyroid level to rule out hyperthyroidism, serum cobalamin and folate measurements to help support a diagnosis of IBD and to guide treatment decisions, and diagnostic imaging such as an ultrasound or x-rays. Diagnostic imaging helps identify abnormalities such as changes in the thickness of the bowel wall and enlarged abdominal lymph nodes. These imaging studies can help rule out systemic diseases like cancer, and guide your veterinarian in selecting the appropriate region of the GI tract to biopsy. In some cases, your veterinarian may recommend a dietary trial as a part of the diagnostic workup. A dietary trial involves feeding your cat a special therapeutic diet for a period of time to see if the signs of GI disease improve. Very often we use the therapeutic foods to do these kinds of dietary trials. Um, when we do those types of trials, we put the animal onto this novel protein diet and we give it somewhere between two to six weeks to look and see if, if that's going to have some beneficial effect on what's um, happening with the, the cat. Um, in the end, we tend to see that those dietary changes, if the diet is going to be the primary influence, really most cats will respond within the first two weeks, but often we extend it to six weeks because some cats respond slower than others. Dietary trials can be used to help rule out conditions such as intolerance to components within the food. During a diagnostic workup, your veterinarian may recommend an intestinal biopsy. Biopsies can be used to evaluate your cat's GI tract microscopically to help determine the definitive cause of your cat's illness. The cat is placed under anesthesia and a thin, flexible, fiber-optic endoscope is passed into the upper or lower GI tract. Through a lens, the veterinarian is able to visualize the mucosal lining, looking for abnormalities. Small tissue samples are then collected for microscopic evaluation. Once the biopsy samples are obtained, they are sent to a laboratory, where a pathologist examines them under a microscope. We want to look at the crypts or the glands beneath the villi and we're looking for evidence that there is degeneration and in fact in this kitty we do have one dilated crypt. You notice the lining epithelium again is tall columnar cells and here the cells are very very low or flattened or attenuated and so these cells are having difficulty maintaining their normal structure and function. In addition some of these cells have died and are sloughing off into the lumen of this gland and then we see some inflammatory debris accumulating in here. These are macrophages and then this is necrotic or dead tissue. So again, this is supporting the fact that this kitty has an inflammatory process within the glands. And so the role of the pathologist is to evaluate the biopsy and look for evidence of any of those conditions and then report it back to the clinician who then takes that information, correlates it with all of their studies 
plus they have examined the patient and so they will uh, integrate that information as they uh, try and make a diagnosis as well as formulate a treatment plan for the animal. Arriving at a diagnosis of IBD is usually a multi-step process of disease elimination. Often, several rounds of diagnostic testing may be required. These tests are normally performed in batches, with the least invasive tests performed first and the more invasive tests, such as biopsies, reserved for last.